Okay, as you guys know, the title was uh, is um, how does your sheep prepare your pathway? So, Father, in your precious name, my Lord Jesus, I just want to thank you, Lord, for this opportunity that you're giving your body, Lord, to stir themselves up, Father, yes. and uh, make themselves available, my Lord, and to always, Lord, seek you for all wisdom, for all knowledge and understanding, and that the hearts of the people, Lord, may be open to receive your seed, your powerful love, and your your willing emotion of of your beauty, my Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 So um there's different things that, that can prepare your seed. And uh, I wrote a couple of them here. Um, your tithes is a is a good example of of something that, that, that prepares your pathway, your seed. Amen. And of course another your tithes is something that you plan to give your hard work or you know earn money that you that you provide to God's house. Your servitude is another example of, of how it takes your seed to just a, a different level. You know, your servitude, sometimes the way you serve, not just in the house of God, but what you do outside the walls of the house of God Amen. is very powerful because sometimes you don't have to speak the word, just your actions alone will create some a, a form of question like, why is this person, why do I see this person in, in great attitude all the time? Why is this person always in, in a happy boat? And then eventually, you become a magnet because the, the Bible says that the Lord, that Jesus is, is inside of you. Amen. Amen. When you receive, when you receive Him as your Lord and Savior, He comes and He lives inside of your temple. Amen. So therefore, whatever you do out there, um, you, He He the Bible says that He will draw all men unto Himself. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. So therefore, you're out there and you are you are His magnet. Amen. Amen. So Amen. servitude Amen. is very important, and of course, as a result of a lot of these, you give your testimonies. Amen. To your friends, to your family, to your coworkers. Testimonies is one of my favorites because it's taken me to a level where I've shared with other people and I, what I love about a testimony is that it is everybody's personal experience in your journey with God Amen. and yes. I love to share it because it is something that I can take from somebody that I know personally mm -hmm. and say mm -hmm. my brother or my sister this happened this weekend to them and it just it becomes stronger to the person who receives it because it's not just third or fourth party or, or you know any further than that. So, but out of all these, the um, Alicia kind of touched at the end of her word on what I'm choosing to speak on, and that is the word of God. Amen. The word of God is the most powerful seed that can be planted. Amen? Yeah. Amen. The Bible actually commands us to sow the proper seed, which is the word of God. Amen? So with that, the word of God is your source for guidance. Amen? So when, when I became a Christian, when I became my, when I first opened up my heart to the Lord and then um, I began to see um, people's lives, people just worshiping, uh, it, was, it, was, it was blew me away how young people just would come here and worship, or just men of all ages, women of all ages would just worship the Lord. And, and, I, and, I, and my, my choosing to do was to sit in the back and just watch and just, just be amazed. And, and, but there was a curiosity in me that wanted to know what is it and why. That, that draws people to do this, and do they look around, do they feel embarrassed? You know, what is it that, that, that and, it, and, and I came one weekend, and I, I, I came continuously, and I, and I kept seeing the same thing over and over, and then I wanted, I wanted to know why, I wanted to know what is it that I, that I missed out on, what is it that I did not see that, um, that caused people to just, to just want to be so, so, so uh, loving toward God, amen? Mm -hmm. So, um, the Word of God is something that you, the only way to, to, to discover it and to understand it and to actually walk in it is to begin to be obedient and read it. Amen? Mm -hmm. um, blessed is the house of God that is preaching from, from the Bible, from, from His Word. Amen? Because it will, it, will, it, will act, it will actually have you go, take some notes and, and go home and look into your own Bible. Amen. And, and <coughs> check the scriptures to see if they match up, to see if what you heard today, what you felt today, was is something that was actually written so many years ago, amen. Um, and that it's it's like Psalms thirty four eight. It says, "Taste and see that the, the Lord's good," amen. Mm -hmm. um, no matter what your circumstances, no matter what your position in life is, you ask the Lord for guidance. You ask the Lord for any kind of present time that He can be with you, and He will show up. Amen. He will show up. And w w one thing that I noticed was, um, in my experience, He shows up. Like almost instantly when you first get to meet God, mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. And and I think it's a, it's an awesome thing because God allows you to know that um, 
He, he amazes you so many times because you, you laugh at your situation, you laugh at yourself, you smile and you're like, oh my God, I, my prayers were answered in this way, my question was answered in this way. But as, as you progress as the seed of, in your heart, as a seed within yourself, because you actually become the seed, amen? You actually become the Word of God is the seed. But as you speak the Word of God, as you read the Word of God, you become it on your journey, amen? amen. And, of course, God himself is the one who waters it. So, um, I want to uh, start with my, my main um, scripture I wanted to read you guys. is First Peter 22 to 23. And it reads as this. It says, Since you have purified your souls in obeying the truth, the truth again, God's word, amen, through the spirit, in sincere love of the brethren, love one another fervently, with a pure heart, having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible, through the word of God, which is which lives and abides forever. Amen. So, um, I wanted to touch on this scripture and begin by explaining um, obeying the word of God through spirit. And as I said in the beginning, um, the way the, the one thing you want to you have to do. And, and begin is uh, reading his word. Amen. And as you read his word, um, if it depends on on, on, on where you are, uh, your, your heart wise or your mind wise, or spiritual wise. If it's your first time reading God's word, but read it according to the knowledge and wisdom that you had at the time. If I read, if, if I'm going to read God's word and, and I get as far as maybe the first chapter, the right. first couple of paragraphs, and then I stop and I want to question things. Um, Seek wisdom. Seek somebody who is seasoned in God's word. Seek your pastor. Seek someone who, who, who might have an answer to why you came to that stop. Because I, I just find that if you continue reading and continue reading, you will get to the end of the chapter. But what did you learn from God's word? Amen. What did you learn? Perhaps wherever you stop that is where you're actually at in your life. That's good. Amen. Amen. So I think it's very important that you seek the king. Seek, seek, uh, seek wisdom. Amen. And um, and and it will it will manifest for whatever whatever's going through your mind, whatever's going through your heart. Um, you have to make the time. You have to. A lot of people say I don't have time to read the word. I, I, I work a lot. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. Mm -hmm. But in, in reality, you guys, you have to create the time. Amen. Come on. I believe the time has been placed there for us to stretch it in certain ways and stretch it in other ways. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. So we have to come to the understanding that God provides us with the time. And so, if I do create the time to read God's word, because it is, it is, it is the reason why everything that surrounds me, it is the reason why I exist, it is the why everything exists in life, then it's okay if something else comes up short. Amen? Whatever's on the schedule, whatever was planned, whatever, it may come up short, but what shouldn't come short is God's word, Amen. God's anointing, God's, God has just so many things that are, that are ahead of us that we first, we, that we have to... That we can't leave it behind, amen. So, I have a couple of scriptures that that actually back up um, um, the 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 power of the seed of God's word. Deuteronomy eleven eighteen says, "Fix these words of mine in your heart." God commands us to take the words that we read and fix them into our heart. And by doing that, we we have to read it. We have to we have to examine the word. We have to walk the word, amen. I I believe that as you begin to walk your journey in God's word, things will begin to happen in your life. Whether it's at your job, whether it's um, you're going, anywhere you're going and you're walking outside these doors, like I said, you will begin to experience some things with God. Mm -hmm. And this is where the scriptures will, will have to rise up in your spirit and begin to answer for you. <coughs> but the only way you can do this is you have to be able to remain calm, remain at peace, and you have to understand that when these things happen, most of the time that you'll be tested, you'll be tested in areas of your life where you're not in the spirit. Mm -hmm. Amen? When, when you're out in the world, when you're out in, in, during a conversation, when you're at work, when you're at the busiest point of your life, that is when God's word, which is his seed, will, it, it's planted in your heart and, it's, and, it, and it will come up and it will come up to where uh, you will need to bring it out. And the only way you can bring it out is by speaking it. 
So it's, it's almost like whatever's in your spirit and whatever's in your mind, you have to speak and do not worry about what's on your mind because your mind is your battleground. Your mind is a place where confusion will come. Your mind is a place where things that, that, that have nothing to do with what will get you out of that situation or will advance you in that situation Amen. will happen. In 1 John 2, 5, it says, keep his word, obey him in every way. So the Bible continuously tells you to keep his word. Continuously says to just keep his word. Everything is about keeping his word. Amen. And actually, De Deuteronomy, here's a little bit longer than that. It says, um, fix these words of mine in your heart and mind. Tie them as a symbol on your hand and bind them on your forehead. So very important um, that we begin with, even, even if the scriptures is not that big, pretty small, um, there's, there's been studies made that it takes about 21 days for, for you to get used to something. And if you begin to um, try to memorize a scripture, what if, what if it takes 21 days? You can memorize up to, up to 10 scriptures in, in about a year. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. Which is a lot. And believe it and trust and trust in God. The biggest thing you want to do is trust in the Lord that He will, He will present Himself on your behalf. Amen. When the situation comes, but everything works through the Word of God. Amen. 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 God, Jesus says, "I will never leave you nor forsake you." The Bible says this over and over. And the reason why it is important to that. As a, as a small scripture as that is, I will never leave you nor forsake you. It's very important to remember that one because mm -hmm. as, as, as I worship the Lord or, or, or as I begin to seek and, and want more understanding and because you're not, you're not content where you're at, um, the only way that you will move forward and that you will accomplish the seed within you to move toward its destination is through a couple of things called trials and tribulations. Hmm. And trials and tribulations will come at you in different directions. They will come at you through your friends, through your, your co-workers, your family, in every direction. The closest ones to you are the ones that sharpen you the most. Amen? So, it's, I kid you not, it is an honor to, to, to be sharpened by the closest people to you. Amen? Um, and one of the, one of the, one of the, the sayings that I, I got so tired of the most was, um, the enemy is attacking you, or the enemy is just doing this, and just, the enemy is doing that. And I know there's an enemy that exists, okay? We know there's an enemy that exists. Mm -hmm. But I believe that the enemy is so busy with so much of other work that he's doing, that as soon as we say that the enemy is attacking, then he just feels like, oh, I have more work to do now. Uh -huh. Because in, in, in all reality, you guys, I found out through my own experience that um, through my trials and tribulations, if I'm asking for more of God, if I'm asking for more of His presence, if I'm asking for more of how, his, how does His seed work, how does how does the spiritual work, how does the spiritual realm work, how, how come I don't see it, you know? If I'm asking for more of these things, then guess what? I'm going to come through some trials and tribulations. But what I need to understand is that when they do come, I'm going to be I'm, it's going to be unexpected. I, I have no idea when it's going to happen, or what's going to happen today. I don't know what I'm going to face. But all I know is that. I, I need to be prepared. The Bible says prepare, be ready in season and out of season. Be ready for anything coming in your direction. But if I'm asking for these trials and tribulations, the, the way that I'm going to keep myself as, as, as in the eye of the storm, in a, in a form of peace, is by having God's word inside of me, in my heart, on, and allowing the, God, allowing the word to come out at the proper time. That's right. Amen? <laughs> and the proper time means that it won't be your time, it'll be God's time. What it means is that that... I can see the situation coming forward that may take me to, to an, an angry situation or, or lose control of, of something that I, I'm, I'm going to have trouble with in the past. And instantly I begin to say, Lord Jesus, may your presence be here. Father, you are the, you are the, you are the Prince of Peace. Amen. Father God, in the name of Jesus, nothing, will, no, no weapon shall form against me shall prosper. And in the name of Jesus, I begin to feel this peace within within the situation, and I will realize that this, that the circumstance will now have to pause itself and understand that God's word has come forth. Amen. 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 So you have to understand that um, 
It is the only way that you can that you can uh, continue being the seed. I like I like when Lisa mentioned that um that there is, there is such thing as a dormant seed. And before we came to Christ, we've always been a dormant seed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're born, but we That's have good. no idea That's what right. it is. That's right. That is true. Yeah. We, we, we don't That's know what right. it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're walking on this. It's almost like you're so you're you're alive. You're you exist, but you're not alive yet. Okay. Amen. Zombie. Yeah. Exactly. We're just walking. <laughs> no idea where we're going or where we're headed to. And uh, and and through our trials and tribulations, what we know that the seed, which is God's word, is what will get us out of the situation and get us into the, the new the new situation that He wants us in. I, I wrote a, a, a interesting quote that I heard from a coworker today, and um, and this is for you know for situations that you may have at work or or if you're not working when you're out in the world. And it says, God doesn't give you the people you want. He gives you the people you need mm. to help you, to hurt you, to lead you, mm -hmm. to love you, and to make you the person you were meant to be. Amen. Yeah. 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 I love to hear that because through the people is, is, is how we get hurt. It's through the people is how we don't understand. We, we, we forget that there's a trial, there's a tribulation, <laughs> and um, we need to understand that everything that comes in our direction is a teaching from our Father. Because he wants to take us toward where that seed, toward where he, where his son went. Amen. Amen. So, mm -hmm. one important thing that I wanted to bring up before we even understand how the seed is going to work is, where is your heart? Mm. Amen. Is your heart um, active and ready to receive a seed? Do we need? I believe that we need to cultivate your heart. You need to cultivate the ground. Amen. And. The, the, the number one tool that we can use to be able to cultivate the ground of your heart is your attitude. Amen? If you have the right attitude, your attitude is what will begin to crack your heart. It's what will begin to, like your heart can be as hard as, as, as have you ever seen that dirt where, where if you try to put a shovel through it, you may only get the dirt. Yeah. Been there. Mm -hmm. That dirt is <laughs> crazy. <laughs> has a lot of that dirt. Amen? So a lot of us come to the Lord with our heart in that kind of condition. Though. That's good. Heart. So if my heart is in that kind of condition, how am I going to receive a word that my brother or my sister is saying? How is it that I'm going to walk away um, understanding, as it seems that we're explaining, um, for, the, for the rest of the week, for the rest of the month? Or it may last for a, a couple of hours. But understanding that um, that by breaking down my heart, by breaking down the texture of, of, of that rough layers of layers of hurt and pain that you receive in life, um, it is the only way that we need to first understand where we're at in our hearts. Amen? Amen. The Bible says that out of, out of to, to uh, protect your heart, out of, out of it flows the issues of life. Amen. So you have to protect your heart. Mm -hmm. And you have to endure to mature for whatever comes in your direction. Amen. Amen. So, in these ways, and these are some, these are some of the ways that, uh, that the seed prepares your pathway. So, um, and I, I wrote three things down that I believe are, are like almost like a vitamin to a hardened heart. One of them, of course, is pride. Pride is something that we need to get rid of. Pride is something we need to break down and just, Amen. just go away with it. It will never, it will never actually go away, but it will, it will sit around mm -hmm. waiting for you to become weak again. But and that is where your and that is where God's word comes out of you and it puts it back in its place. Amen. Mm -hmm. Another thing that, that sits people's hearts is prejudice and bias. That's okay. Right. A lot of these things, prejudice and bias, are things that we pick up when we were kids, pick, that we picked up from people, from maybe we, we, we weren't raised correctly, or we didn't have our parents in the right household, mm -hmm. or whatever the case was. But a lot, a lot of us have learned things through life from the wrong people. Amen. Mm -hmm. And so, Amen. prejudice and bias is one of the things that that will always come up in your heart because as as God begins to work in your life, it has to it has to come back up, it has to arise, and it has to be it has to get rid of. So um, if, if if you happen to be a person that is that you feel dry in your life and you feel like your heart is not where it should be, um, it's almost like a tree that doesn't sit by the river. Amen. It's like a tree that that, that you see um, in the distance where where somehow some way it's grown in the desert. Somehow some way, but the only reason why it's grown in the desert is because it, it, it it's just looking so deep underground and it's just fighting through whatever rock whatever's in its way. And that tree represents us. Amen. Because there will be times in our lives where we will get dry. Where we, will, we, will, we will just not know 
what happened in our path, you know? And mm -hmm. let that tree be the reason why we will continue to just search for God and search for His Word and just get deeper with Him <coughs> and just allow it to, to, to cultivate. Amen? Amen. Amen. And I know i got about a minute left. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done, but I do want to say one thing in closing. Um, I want to say that, um, that Jesus Christ Himself was, as the Bible says, the Word that took on flesh. Amen? And being a G Jesus, in my, in my opinion, Jesus Christ Himself was the original seed, was a seed of the Word Okay. The word of God, amen. And out of that one seed, he produced 12 seeds. Amen. amen. And out of the 12, the 11 went out and have turned you who are in this room today. So many others that are out there that are that are, that are seeds in the making in God in, in God's kingdom, amen. And thanks to the fact that the through the resurrection of my Lord Jesus Christ, that he is the seed that lives inside of me and lives inside of me. Amen. And so I, 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 I command you guys to read the word, which is the proper seed to be sown, and speak the word and allow it to go forth in your life. Amen. 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 Amen.